Hello everybody, welcome to the April Script Showcase for Monday Teens. Let's get a round of applause. Yeah. First off, thank you to all the students for all the hard work they put in the last few months. We've been working on dramatic film acting. Thank you parents for just supporting them and all they're doing. And thank you for everybody watching online um, as we put up the things we've been working on. So here's what Showcase is really about for us. If you're new to Showcase, I'd like to just explain it for a moment. It's not a show, and that's why we title it different, okay? So it's like a show, but the idea is this is how we track. This is how we track inside of our system, inside our studio. So if you go back, and they have been here for a while, you can watch past showcases and see the growth. Literally see the growth, okay? So today is really about putting up the things they've been working on and then comparing where they are today compared to their last showcase or their next showcase as we keep moving forward, okay? So today is all about support. Today is very much like a class, a similar type of style. So I may be stopping and going with people if they need the work or the help. I may teach you guys some lessons as we're going along. Like that's part of what Showcase is. Or maybe I just let them go all the way through depending. Okay. So as we do that, this is what our tracking system is. So again, I'm very excited to have you guys. We've been working on monologues and scenes in drama the last three months. So we're going to start off with monologues. Uh, students are going to come up and put up a monologue one at a time. And then after that, we're going to put up some scenes, and then that should close out our night, and then we'll do some closing announcements. So thank you all for being here. We're going to get started with our first performer. Let's get a big round of applause as we start out the monologue section. Somebody comes up, the next person yeah. should go out, okay? It gets tough in the beginning. Yeah. Okay? 
So look right at Daniel. Are we all set? We're all set. Okay. Start. Visualize that person you're talking to. This is Dylan performing chicanery. 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 Let's get a round of applause. Woo! I am not crazy. I am not crazy. I know he swapped those numbers. I knew it was 1216. One after Magna Carta, as if I could ever make such a mistake. Never. Never. I just, I just couldn't prove it. He, he covered his tracks. He got that idiot at the coffee shop to lie for him. You think, you think this is something? You think this is bad? This? This chicanery? He's done worse. That billboard. Are you telling me a man just happens to fall like that? No. He orchestrated it. Jimmy. He defecated through a sunroof. And I saved him, and I shouldn't have. He'll never change. He'll never change. Ever since he was nine, always the same. Couldn't keep his hands out of the cash drawer. <gasps> but not our Jimmy. Couldn't be precious Jimmy. Stealing the blind, and he gets to be a lawyer. What a sick joke. I should have stopped him when I had the chance. I knew you had to stop him, you. I apologize. I lost my train of thought. It's been off topic. That's it. Yeah. Okay, we'll go ahead and camera. Visualize. Next performer is Maya performing a short. funeral, or picking the music, planning his funeral, and you, it was my dad, and you, it's hard to say, you never loved him, you didn't, and you never loved me, and that's cool, I get it, 
I was from the first marriage. If I could think as a real live grown up, we could see past that. But maybe it was just too much for you. Fine. I didn't raise my voice to you once. But if you think you're planning a funeral without me, if you think you have the right to do that, then I can't be quiet anymore. Because he was my dad. Mine first. And you were later. And I'm not backing down on this one. So I suggest suggest you pick up your Fendi purse and leave. See? things the same way. You know, I was ready to believe that people were good. But Ralph, he always saw the worst in people. But he changed. He did. He changed. And I couldn't see that for a long time. Now that I can, I, I think that's what's so hard. Is, um, you know, of course I miss Ralph, but it took me so long see what he had become. I never had a chance to tell him. But it's how proud I was to be his friend. And that I always will be. He taught me more than I could ever taught him. And for that, I will always be grateful. home early. 
And when I got home, mom was dead. And nobody else. Like, I further than that. And she just looked at it and kind of laughed. It'll blow over, she said. It's just one of those days that it's just. So I took the note back to her and went to my room and cried all over it until the ink broke. And then you came home and saw the note. Do you remember what you said? She said I was the very best and a much better friend than her and that I didn't deserve to melt like that. And then you cried. You're the only person that's ever cried for me, Cheryl. The only person. Okay, next, come on out. We'll get all set up. <coughs> next up, we've got Jerem performing Wake Up for the first time. Round of applause. Why did I know I'd find you here? What are you doing here? You, you have the ability to actually be something. You have a talent that most people wish that they had. And you want to throw that all away for drinking and drugs? Why can't you wake up, Chris? That, that's the whole point. You might never wake up. This could kill you. Why can't you pull yourself together and snap out of this mess you got yourself into? Why can't you look in the mirror anymore? Look, I know you're going through this, but I, want, I, I don't want you going down that road. And I'll, I'll take you myself. I'll, I'll pay the whole way. You can do this. Whatever it takes to get you the help you need. I know you. Don't, don't end up like all those other guys. Other guys that go down in flames because of some addiction, some craving for drugs. The world doesn't need another cliche. You're never so old. You're, you're too young and Justice performing mind tricks. Honestly, do you ever 
Which am I going to put your tummy in? I literally lost my voice mid blue. We're together. I feel like life just it just stops for a second. It lets me breathe. If you were a bad boyfriend, I wouldn't feel like when you hug me, I'm floating. Or when you kiss me, that there's no one in this world other than just us. To be honest, you might be a bad boyfriend. You don't know how much you mean to me. Master 
another student. Huh? Didn't you hear me? Why do I have to listen to you? It's you that wants the A before I even start, but what if I want the same thing? I'm nuts, right? I'm not gonna cry. This school has been a miracle for me, and not because of you, because somebody, Mr. Hoffman, finally saw me. And you know what? More than that, somebody, a grown person, decided that I was good before I was good. And you wanna throw me out of that? what I say? Say, well, that's your God. And I don't want to. doesn't really matter. Like, like if you wear makeup, you know you look good. It doesn't matter as much. my parents tell me I'm pretty, but they're supposed to. When you hear it from them, it, it doesn't matter as much. And sometimes you know you're pretty, so it really doesn't matter. Like, if you wear makeup, you know you look good. It doesn't matter as much. But sometimes you don't hear it, and that matters. shame sheet at the store. Figured they should know he owns the school. Right, you guys? Right. Moving on. Oh, where were we? Right, the auditorium. Oh, wait. Before we go, I'm going to show you guys something really cool. Okay? Look at these lockers. They all look alike, right? Not this one. This one is special. It belonged to a girl who killed herself. You see all these don't kill yourself posters up here on the wall? They're up because she killed herself. And you want to know why she did it? 
because the kids here treated her poorly. But no one wants to admit it, so they hang up a memorial and cover up the school bathroom because that's the kind of school that this is. Everyone is just so nice until they drive you to kill yourself. And sooner or later, the truth will come out. Right? Right, Tony? Truth will come out. Welcome to Liberty High. Let's get Mila and Haley to go ahead and head backstage because you're going to be doing your scene next while Victoria's getting set up for her monologue. Okay. So this will be our last uh, monologue before we move to the scene section. Um, this is Victoria. This will also be her last time in the teen class as she's getting ready to move up to the adults because she's been working her butt off and so we're very excited for her. So. Um, once she's ready, we'll get a big round of applause. When you're ready, just say when, and then I'll do the scene. Okay. Next up, we've got Victoria performing Fault in Our Stars. My name is Hazel Grace Lancaster, and Augustus Waters is the star-crossed love of my life. Ours is an epic love story, and I, I probably won't be able to get more than a sentence out without disappearing into a puddle of tears. Like all real love stories, ours will die with us. You know, I kind of hoped that he'd be the one eulogizing me because there was, there was really no one else. Um, I'm, I'm not going to talk about our love story because I can't, so instead I'm going to talk about math. I'm, I'm not a mathematician, but I do know this. There are infinite numbers between zero and one. Um, there's, there's point one, there's point one two, point one one two, and an infinite collection of others. Of course, there's a bigger set of numbers between zero and two, or between zero and a million, Some infinities are simply bigger than other infinities. A writer that we used to like taught us that. You know, I want more numbers than I'm likely to get. And God, do I want more days for Augustus Waters than what he got. But Gus, my love, I cannot tell you how thankful I am for our little infinity. He gave me a forever within the numbered days, and for that I am eternally grateful. I love you so much. So now we're going to be doing a little set building on the in-between, so there may be an extra second or two to get set, and then we'll start each scene. So we're going to enter. Yeah. You're entering, yeah. right? Okay. So just so you know, Jenny, she'll be entering into the scene, and then end up over by her. What's that? Over here. Like, give me the exact ish. Around here. Around here. Okay, and you can come a little closer to me, like here. Okay. Yeah. So when you're following, you can either follow her from out there, or however you like. I'm going to like knock on the door from here. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll give you the knock. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. Our first scene in the scene section is going to be performed by Mila and Haley. 
performing a scene called Ten Things. Let's give them a round of applause. Woo! I know you hate having to sit at home because I don't want to go to this dance. Like you do care. I do care. But I'm a firm believer in doing something for your own reasons and not someone else's. Yeah, well, I wish I had that luxury. You know, I'm only one of us that got asked to the spring dance and I can't go because you don't feel like it. I know Dad's rule is dumb. But Bianca, he's doing the best he can. And he's doing it for a reason. I never told you what happened when I went to the 8th grade dance when I was in your grade. Please tell me you're joking. You hate school events. Now I do. So what happened? Well, all my friends told me that I had to go. It was a big deal to be asked as a 6th grader. So I did. And when I got to the dance with my date, I quickly realized I was just the 8th grader's final chance. What are you talking about? Well... They had this big setup. I called over to the punch bowl. The next thing I knew, I had punch tossed all over my dress. I came home crying and humiliated. How is it possible I did not know about this? Why didn't you tell me? I wanted to let you make up your own mind about middle school and not be terrified of my experiences. Well, yeah, well, that didn't happen because now Dad won't let me do anything unless you come along. He's just trying to protect you. I refuse to go back to school for two weeks after it happened. Middle school can be tough enough without being called the punch bowl, girl. But it's not fair. He can't lock me in my room for the rest of my life. Just remember, not all experiences are as hurting as they sound, Bianca. You can't always trust the people you want to. Yeah, well, I guess I'll never know, will I? Set anyway. You're gonna enter, is that right? Yep. Yeah, quick. Awesome. <laughs> so you'll enter in and end up here. I think you would enter in because oh, okay. from the scene, oh, yeah. you're I'm already. I'm on my front porch. Yep. So actually, let's stand up a little. I'm just gonna move these over. I'll just put this away because I just need these. Yep. Set that to the side. Thank you. Literally, since it's off camera, Will, you can literally just look at him, kind of connect, see where he's at, and then yeah. enter from right here. You don't even have to go behind the curtain. Okay? So just kind of zone in, and you're zoning out. Yeah? Uh, if you want to make it look more realistic, just from the scene, mm -hmm. so I'm on my, you know, like my porch, mm -hmm. patio bench, or whatever. Yeah. And uh, he's going from my little driveway area, mm -hmm. going up into my, my porch. So here's why I want to switch it for this specific one, is just, we're going to go as if it's from the side, because okay. that way you won't see him until okay. he comes. I don't want you to see him coming until he gets closer to you, okay. right? Because then you can just sulk and be in your own sad, like, emotional moment until he comes in and becomes a part of it, okay. until you, like, notice him. But before you notice him, you're just out, and, like, we'll get some great footage of you just emotional. Okay. Okay? Does that make sense? Good point, though. I like the point. Feeling ready? Yeah. Okay, good. Go ahead and start getting emotional, Jaden. Can you tell us why? <laughs> yeah, I will. Thank you. Stand like head up, Jaden. Head up and out. Take a few lines for a second, and then when you're ready, face forward. Not direct the camera, but out towards the camera. As if you were filming for a uh, book film. Next scene is called Sandlot. 
with Will and Jaden. Let's get a round of applause. Gonna play some ball. Need an extra guy. Wanna go? Nah, thanks. Oh, why not? Don't you like baseball? Oh, yeah, but... But what? Because you got picked on a little? Yeah. It, it's because my glove's busted, so, you know, can't play. <sighs> That's okay. We got an extra one. Thanks. Cool glove. You sure you're only on the team? Yeah, of course. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for inviting invite me with you, Ben. Thanks for playing. You'll make a great shortstop. Woo! So, for our camera people real quick, she's going to come in, she comes to talk to her, they talk for a second, at some point she'll sit, they'll talk here for a second, she'll get up, she's so mad, she'll go over there, Justice then comes over and sits next to her. So, that'll be what you're following, they're going to end there, most of it's here, slash you're walking, so what I suggest is having you as the follow cam. Yeah. Kind of either follow Justice in for a cool shot, and then kind of put your focus. You can move around, but then whenever they get up, like follow them would be a cool pan shot. Okay, and then Daniel, just make sure you get everything that's going on the main two. Okay, lean back. That's set direction. So it is my business. You're Jackie, talking behind my back. Jackie, isn't she the nice one? There are no nice ones. I wish I'd ever gone to school in the first place. But you like my school. I know you would. I hate it, okay? I hate it. Augie, I'm sorry, but you're not the only one that has bad days. Do people avoid touching you at school? No. Jackie was all I had. So don't compare your bad days to mine, okay? Notice that Miranda doesn't come around anymore? What? She didn't? Shocker. She went away to camp this summer and now she doesn't like me anymore. Why? Because school sucks and people change. So if you want to be a normal kid, Augie, then those are the rules. So let's go trick or treating, okay? Because right now we are each other's best friends. Really? Yeah. So come on. I'll let you off on my Halloween candy. <laughs>
see where you're going to end up, so we can go to campus. what I tell all my girl students, the less pretty you can be, the better. Just kidding, it's a joke. You'll see what I'm talking about. Probably sound pretty to me. So you're going to come in and end up like up here. Then you get up. Okay? So J Jenny's just listening. Then we'll, do we go anywhere else or meet up just here? Okay. Well, this will be the main one. Daniel, do you get a good angle on what this is going to be? Yeah. Okay. And then you can kind of be going back and forth between them and get some creative shots or whatever you want, but most of it will be here. Yeah? Okay, cool. So you can leave. If you want to follow her in, you can, or however you want to handle that. Okay? All right. Before we uh, get their applause, can we get an applause for Jenny? For all the work she did? Yeah. tell you. I have something to tell you. Our future freshman zone is going to be painted San Francisco. Um, SDSU just called and it, they offered me a basketball scholarship. Wow. Yeah, and and they told me they, they need me there right away. Yeah. So I said yes. What? You already decided without even talking to me? Well, I mean, Liv, this is Southern California State University. You know, it's my dream school. It's, uh, it's a life-changing offer for me. Maddie, I gave up Voltage for you. Hold on. I did not ask you to do that. No, but you didn't have to. I thought that was the point. I told you to follow your heart. And my heart wants to be with you. I thought that's what you wanted too. Remember? Sisters by chance, friends by choice. That is not fair, Liv. I have always supported you in everything that you do. Walking away from Voltage was huge, Maddie. Walking away from that could ruin my entire career. Walking away from SESU could ruin my entire future. Why can't you just be happy for me? Fine, go to California, Maddie, but don't expect me to act like you didn't betray me because you did. Ugh. Ava gonna end up so we can talk to Jenny about that. Um, probably here. Okay, somewhere in there. She's gonna enter in. So I'd stay here okay. for this one so you can kind of follow her. Um, and then uh, when we get going, Daniel, you can kind of look and try and get the close angle or close to of this side, and then you can do a little more of this side. Okay. So yeah, as much as you can, try not to be behind them, other than like for a moment, so that you're not in his shot. Yeah. As much as you can. Okay. Come on. 
with me. I'm not leaving just because you're doing the one thing that you always do. Amy's already raw and nerve, already on a raw nerve. Now she's pissed. What's that supposed to mean? Just, you always talk big game and then you just give up when things get uncomfortable. Like when you jumped in the pool and now you're mad that you're all wet. That's bull. If I didn't drag you into things, you won't drag me. You force me to do whatever you want to do. What does that even mean? You decide what we do and when we do it, then we always have to do it together. I have to decide what we do because you never decide on anything. I have to do all the levy heavy lifting in this friendship. You never take charge. I take charge? You never take charge. I always have to push you. Without me, you wouldn't be anything. I'm going to Africa without you. Yeah, and I encourage you to study a, a summer abroad. I'm not going for the summer. I'm going for the whole year. What? I'm taking a gap year. I deferred Columbia until next fall. When did you decide that? When I applied. January. You've been lying to me since January? Yeah, because I knew you would have tried to bully me into staying. But we're going to have completely different schedules, and we're not going to graduate together, and we're not going to go on our post-college trip. We're not going to go to D.C. together. Our whole plan. That was your plan. That was never my plan. That was always yours. I can't believe you. You think going to Africa makes you tough. You're not even brave enough to tell me. You're a coward. You're selfish and mean. You're a bad friend. You're the bad friend. I called Malala. That was our sacred code. I got the Metro North com computer pass for you to visit New York every weekend. Nobody asked you to do that. Just like nobody asked you to come to this freaking party. Nobody wanted you here. Nobody invited you. Screw you! They're really friends. <laughs> no, we hate each other. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get a round of applause for everybody really quick. Awesome. I'm gonna run through a couple announcements and I'd love everybody to come up one more time so we can all just do like a photo together and just like get a round of applause for everybody all up here at once. So um, this whole program, this last three months has been specifically uh, catered towards dramatic film acting. Uh, our script class is always going through new topics. So the next three months, we're gonna be moving into commercial acting and auditioning, okay? So this is huge for out here because Phoenix is a commercial market. So. Uh, for those who don't have an agency, this is mandatory for you to eventually get an agent as you have to get really good at commercials. For those who already do, you have to be constantly refreshing your commercials and very good at being able to do them at any time, specifically cold reads and auditions. We also run a casting company here called Phoenix Casting. So we do a lot of castings throughout the year. We pull from our own old castings. So the next three months are all geared around commercials and auditioning and getting better at auditioning so that you can get the gig, okay? So we're very, very excited for the next three months. Um, that's gonna be our section. Uh, we have a week off next week, so I'll be emailing out to you guys uh, a link of my schedule for connection if you'd like to just talk about the showcase, talk about growth, where they're at. The whole point of this whole thing is it's meant to be just a timestamp. So yes, it's fun to get up and perform, that's a part of it, but the real reasoning is so that they can go back and look at their first day of, of class in general and their first showcase and compare it to now and then watch the first time, second time they perform their monologue and their scene and now and see all the growth so that they can continue to get excited because sometimes in this industry and in, in any industry really it can feel like grass growing like you're just watching grass growing as you keep getting better and better and waiting for more opportunities and things like that so you have to get excited about the growth so that's why we do these showcases so it'll be in the email, but if parents and uh, students want to come in and just talk to me about their acting career, where they're at, where they're heading, all that stuff, you can schedule an appointment very easily, and I'd love to sit down with you and just talk goals, okay? That makes sense, everybody? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay, great. 
And then again, our next se section is commercials. We do not have class next week. That's our week off. We'll be back right after that in the first week in May. Okay? So um, let's get a round of applause and let's get all the students up. Come on up, guys. We can cut on the feed of the live I'm going to add feed. my cross. All right. Everybody up.